is the 74 by Steve Brooks. It is now officially launched. Bravo. Steve, of course, has his word next, and then remember, if you've got any questions or points you want to raise about what's in the book or what they've said, we are going to let you have your say when Steve's finished, so get your curly ones ready. Um, I also noticed that, um, Rod, you let them off a bit this time. I've, I've seen you on previous occasions where you've had a go at them over their age. There was one occasion in the North Melbourne Town Hall, I remember. Oh, where you the communist party. Birthday. That's right, and you declared the average age of the audience to be deceased. <laughs> uh, he was kind to you today. Well, I today they're on the happy side of the uh, Right, the right. Also, I see the ASIO pile reminds me of another um, august um, old Jewish lefty, uh, Amir Inglis's dad, Gust, who when uh, they, she had a look at his file, um, she read a report from one character who'd been out near their house spying on him and uh, said that Gust had told somebody that he was writing an autobiography but the spy said in brackets, because of a passing tram, I couldn't hear about who. <laughs> it says a lot about Asia, really, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, we uh, yet, yet another Asia victim, Steve Brooks, friend to you all. I'll read from my prepared notes in a moment, but I think I ought to explain something about the cover of the book. Um, that tie that I'm wearing on the back cover is this tie here, the very same oh, one, really? 40 oh, years oh, later. Oh, it ties at least 40 years old, so uh, I'm a bit older than the tie, I can tell you. <laughs> so that's the same one, that's my uncle in the background. Yeah. Speaking this actually is a montage. That was actually taken a couple of years ago at a footy game. Well, we're wearing a, a same beanie, as you can see. Uh, but the background is a whole photograph in Ulisa Florianska in Krakow. If any Poles are here, will know where that is. In the background is one of Poland's best-known churches, the St Mary's Church, St Mary's Basilica, which has a very famous altarpiece, medieval altarpiece by Witzloch in the foreground to show how things have changed because this photograph was only taken in 1995 how things have changed, you've got a massage parlour and sex shop and in the background you've got the same old church and there's me looking rather dumbfounded on the sort of collage on the front of it ok, now back to my official, uh, official notes um, I wrote this book because God told me to <laughs> and if that's a good enough excuse for George W. Bush it's good enough for me the first thing I have to do, of course, and I do with pleasure, is to thank everyone, and I'll just cross out both of you, <laughs> for being here. Then, profound thanks to Rod and Peter for giving me an impossible act to follow. Now, those without whom this event would probably have been held in a damp back alley somewhere. Thanks to Paddy Garrity of Paddy's Bar Fame. Where's Paddy? There you are, the back there. Um, the Europa Cake Shop in Ackland Street uh -huh. who provided the contribute of the Polish donuts. And the Poles do claim to have invented donuts and uh, they will declare war on anybody who says the opposite. Uh, they, their particular kind of donut with jam and some plum jam, they did take to the United States with them and the Americans copied it and uh, other kinds of donuts came from other parts of Europe. Something about multiculturalism in there, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, uh, the fruiter, I'd like to thank the fruiter. I know Heather, where, what was the name of the fruiter again? Where's Heather? Well, Heather helped to organise the, the strawberries, and the strawberries are there and they're very good. I think they will disappear by now, haven't they? Mostly. Uh, okay, to John, George, Gloria, and Heather, to Sue Bounty, my indestructible publicity person, whose fingernails are almost as bitten as mine, to Ilana Markovitz, who was present at the birth of the title to Carmel Shute, without whom about half of you wouldn't be here, uh, to the members of the Australian Jewish Democratic Society who led to my aid almost without me asking. That's not true. <laughs> and of course to many my wife, who's over there somewhere, or was, a moment ago. Who is, uh, many whose patience puts her in the Mother Teresa class. 
Finally, to Pauline and Dave Deacon, who worked together as captured concepts and were responsible for this stunning production. This was not created, it was produced by intelligent design. <laughs> Those of you who are into current controversy, you can say that it's a product of intelligent design. Um, now, if there's anyone that have left out, please raise your hand. No? Nobody's raising their hands? Well, I thank everybody for being here as well. I won't, say much, I won't say much more. I went to Poland because at the time I saw it as a country conducting an experiment in social fairness, in socialism, as were its neighbouring countries. So at the time, that's how I saw it. Well, we all know what happened to that experiment, and uh, this is not the place to go into the reasons for it, for the, the downfall, but has anyone ever speculated about what the world might have looked like if that experiment had succeeded? Would there be any need for filmmakers like Michael Moore, for Greenpeace, for Amnesty International? Would people like Rob Quantock be employable? <laughs> okay. Um, maybe... I'll, I'll read you a short passage out, out of it. It's, um, I did meet some famous people in my time, including... Including... I'm name dropping, yeah. Um, Rupert Murdoch, would you believe? I'll read, read a short bit out of it, though, about my meeting with Rupert Murdoch. On the day the... I worked at the Daily Mirror as a compositor years ago. The light's very poor here, but it doesn't matter. Um, the Daily Mirror customarily set up um, optional front pages whenever major news events were about to break. This was done in February 1960, when the Queen was due to give birth to her third child. I remember that there were three alternative front page headlines. It's a boy, it's a girl, and royal tragedy nation mourns. <laughs> This last was uh, accompanied by an introductory paragraph reading something like, quote, The very skies over Buckingham Palace wept this morning when it was announced that Her Majesty the Queen had lost her child. In the event, it was Prince Andrew, a boy, and the weather in London was cold but sunny. Anyhow, on the day in question, we were told by the foreman, compositor, not to wash our ink-stained hands for a while, but he would not tell us why. After about an hour, in walks an impeccable Rupert, surrounded by foreigners from top management to review the troops. I was one of the privileged, clad in my blue dust coat and working on a Ludlow headline setter. And if there's any hot metal compositors, or anybody old enough to be a hot metal compositor here, they'll know what I'm talking about, working on a headline setter. Um, this is Stephen, said the foreman, grinning. He's a, a bloody pommy. Murdoch smiled faintly and put out his soft white hand. I shook it warmly, making sure that I transferred at least a little grime. <laughs> we exchanged hand your dues. About time the young bastard got his hands dirty, the foreman told us later. <laughs> so that's my story, my meeting with Rupert Murdoch. He's never forgotten it, I believe. <laughs> okay. Um, well, maybe a few, a few minutes for some questions or comments from the floor, whether you've read strawberries or not. Okay, we'll okay. 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 So, Thanks, Dave.